Hi there. I've been spending some time playing around with Microsoft's Attack Simulator. For those who don't know the Attack Simulator, well, it's basically a Microsoft solution that allows you to fish for the big wheels within your own organization, or in other words, set up your own custom phishing campaigns with reporting and training. And I will take you on an adventure where I share my two cents about the simulator, share some quick tips on cool stuff I figured out, and show you how you can get the most out of the Attack Simulator without that much work. The Microsoft Attack Simulator is included in Microsoft 365 E5 license or in the Microsoft Defender for Office 365 Plan 2. So let's start with going to security.microsoft.com and go down and go to the Attack Simulation Training. Good. To access this part of the portal, you can either have the permission of a global administrator, the security administrator, an attack simulation administrator, or if you're just going to be designing attack payloads, then you can have the attack payload auto role. I truly recommend to use the least privileged role depending on the use case you have within your organization. So don't hand out that global administrator to just somebody who's going to set up some campaigns. Now, before you get started, make sure to check in the compliance.microsoft.com portal and you go down to audit to click on start recording user and admin activity. Done deal. That's what you need in order to log the activities done by your victims. If you're unsure if you have those logs already enabled, you can connect to Exchange Online using the PowerShell module and use following command to verify if the unified audit log ingestion enabled is equals true, then you're good to go and start setting up your simulations. So when you're back to this portal of the attack simulation training, your attention will be drawn to the simulations tab. Um, and one of the first things you want to do is like create your own simulation, your own campaign. And Microsoft gives us the option between six different techniques. Um, the first one is the traditional one, just get the passwords. Try to get the users to click on a capture on a portal and, and let them enter their password and, and username. The other one is let's send them an email using a malware attachment. Hmm? So malware as an attachment. A link attachment is, well, you will be adding an attachment that just contains a URL and you want the end user to open that URL and download your payload or, or go to your credential catcher there. So you're basically hiding your payload as an attachment in a URL. Uh, link malware, well, it's basically the same. Your URL that is in the attachment will point to a malware sample somewhere hosted on, Share, on SharePoint or Dropbox. Uh, drive by URL, well, you get used to click on your URL and it automatically starts downloading some weird stuff on your computer. And then one of the most unique features, which I haven't seen with any other solutions, is the OAuth consent grant, which is very interesting, which I'm going to continue. Enter the name... Um, OAuth campaign, if I can type, like, um, you can create even your creator or even your payload and it seems like they allow email or Teams, sadly enough, we cannot do a Teams payload. Uh, next, OAuth mail payload, so we're creating our own custom payload. Um, you can say, let me fill this in for you guys. Uh, and show you the results. So I went ahead and created like an email or a scenario where I just had Jon Snow, king of the Nord.eu, send up an email in name of the IT saying, hey, there is a new car parking application. And I'm using just a simple email using dynamic tags. So what is dynamic tag? Well, it will get information of your user in out of Azure AD and fill it automatically and dynamically. So it will say, hi, um, Louis, this is Westeros IT department setting up a new parking app and you are now able to view free parking spots and reserve a spot in a week advance. And your manager, which will be the manager that is in Azure Active Directory. So if we go to port, oh, if we go to portal.azure.com, and we sign in and we would go to users and it would take Alex Wilbur, his user account, and I would check if I can find his manager. Well, I can see that Miriam Graham is the manager. So that will state your manager, William Graham, is already informed about this upcoming change. 
And then here comes the clear indicator. So hurry up and give consent to the new app clicking this link. It's first come, first serve. Kind regards, your king, Jon Snow, the true king of the North. Now, how do you add this? Well, what's very important is you need to select, click on phishing link here in this button, then confirm, and then it will dynamically add your payload behind it. Now, you can simply remove this, first come, first serve. Uh, and you click next. Now you can also add indicators. How I do this is I add an indicator and let's do, do we have something with urgency as well? Normally so that's also a sense of urgency. Here we go um, from the body and then we just select and I do control F and I go to the part that I find important. So um, hurry up and let's do this. And then it's a little bit tricky. Select. Uh -huh. Add. So I have two indicators running. Now, how do you break this? You can break this. If I would add another sentence, uh -huh, you're not with, uh -huh. I would do, yay, I would do next. Then you will see some indicators are invalid due to the email content. Why is this? Well, it's because the mechanism behind it, it counts from the start, how many check characters it is before your indicator is there. So we have to readjust these indicators and do it again, like hurry up and reselect it. Select. You see, sometimes it's a little bit buggy. So now I need to go back, go back in. So this is one of the points I have to say, Microsoft, it doesn't work. Help me. 10 hours later. It also doesn't work. So again, you have to delete, add indicator, and start all over again. So let me start with URL hyperlinking and get. So once you're happy with setting up your indicators, you can go to next and actually see a preview of your indicators. For an example, if users would hover, is it hovering? Yes, it's hovering. Um, and you hover over it, it will show. So hurry up and it will show the indicator we just set up. The same for this link. And this is how the end user will receive on the spot training on how you trick them and how they could recognize it. This is completely customizable, takes a little bit of time, but you can't do it. Great. What I'm also going to do is, because we use the Microsoft default landing page here, we can use the payload indicators. So those are the indicators we just created in our email where we had the small bug, where we had this restart over again. But it will, if I go here, it will show these indicators we created an email. So that's what I want. I spend all that time into it. Then we can talk about um, end user notifications. This is a very big part. Make sure that your end users know that they can expect notifications about the training. I have had hundreds of users reporting the training email claiming that it is also fish. No, just send out a pre-notification that emails about phishing training can be received in the inbox of their account. Also, a nice option next to the enable region aware time zone delivery. So the region aware time zone delivery, which means that it would, if I'm, for example, in Brussels, it would send it during daytime or office hours uh, in Brussels time and, and not during the night. Um, if I would be in America, then it would be a different time zone and then it will be during daytime at that time zone. Now, another cool feature that I would like to see to be added is um, based on activity on the mailbox, Let's say a user just send an email, try to get them off, off guard just after sending an email based on some activity. That could also be a nice trigger to say, hey, if they send an email and they've sent like three emails in a row today, then drop off the email that we want to fish them with. Because we know they are working in their inbox right now. Uh, we can send the test, you can validate, uh, and I've sent it to all users. Okay, submit, let's go. And the simulation should run. So let's see in the user's inbox how this looks like. 
Okay, so I just logged in into one of my test users and here we can see um, the email we just created. So uh, to Alex the King of the North uh, with the dynamic tagging. So it's the name and the manager. And let's say we fall into this. So we click on the link um, and we can see, well, if I move a mouse, you won't be able to see, but in the bottom line, you will see office of sense.com <clears throat> then we can see hey permissions requested for the car parking app um, this application is not published by Microsoft uh, if we do accept oh we get to the indicator page or, or the information page we created um, where we could see um, the two indicators we created and um, we can go to the training um, not that anybody is going to do that, start immediately with training, but hey, they have the option, right? Uh, so that's cool, and I think Microsoft is one of the only ones who is able to, to provide this type of experience using an OAuth application to fish your own users. So that's pretty neat. I like that. Now I'm going to learn you guys a small little trick on how you can recognize emails sent from the attack simulator. Well, basically, emails sent from the attack simulator aren't actually emails that are being sent. They do not pass through um, Exchange Online. Um, how can we see that? Well, if we go to view, view message details and we analyze the headers, those who are familiar with email headers will say, hey, there's a lot missing here. There's only like four rules that's talking about Exchange Online or MS Exchange, but where's all the rest? Well, emails sent by the attack simulator aren't actually emails. They're just email objects being placed into the inbox of the user. So that's a small trick to recognize. Hey, no, this is not a legit email. Um, I've used it in the past when my boss tried to fish me. I just looked into the headers when I was suspicious of an email. I know, yep, it's one of those. Okay, so if we go to the payload um, page, which is part of the content library, we can see all of the payloads Microsoft has to offer and has created for us um, that we can use in our email campaigns. Uh, you can preview them as well. But let's say you received a good phishing email in real life, which you think, wow, this is great. I want to use this within my own firm. I want to trick people with this. I almost fell for it my own. Um, well, what you can do is um, if you go up and you go to tenant payloads, it allows you to create your own payload. Uh, so it's an email payload. Let's say it's credential harvesting, huh? uh, my own payload. Uh, next. And then we can see here, here we can create our own payloads. You could do it manually, which I've done previously but I want to steal something. I want to steal something from the real hackers. So I received this email uh, somewhere in my, in my my unwanted email inbox. It's in Dutch, it doesn't really matter. Um, and what you can do is if you go to, uh, it's, well, it says read him, but it's view, and then look at the source of the message. You scroll down, you'll see the headers. We do not care for those at the moment, but you'll see most of the phishing emails are just plain text or just not plain text, they're HTML, which is cool because we can copy and paste HTML and get it into our code section of the phishing emails. We paste it here, we do text, ta-da! We have all of that nice config, styling, HTML, images as well work. Um, and it just works like that. Now, there are URLs behind this and they are still pointing to the malicious website, which we don't want, want, which we do not want. But if you just do this, replace all links, the portal will replace all URL links to the official phishing link. And you can just use it. Oh, yeah, I, I haven't done um, all of the necess necessary steps right here. But I just wanted to show you this just you can easily copy paste any good looking phishing email and put it into the code part and work with it um, for your campaigns. I like this part. And my last tip is all of this recording has been possible due to the fact that I have my own Microsoft test tenant and I've made an own, my own video about this on how you can create it. Um, 
if you want to play around with the tech simulator, you can. You just have to create your own Microsoft test tenant. It takes about five minutes to get you going and you're good to go. Try experimenting, try the fun stuff. You can try all the other portals, but that's all explained in this video. So I definitely recommend also watching this video. So thank you for watching my video about the attack simulator. Microsoft's attack simulator has a lot of potential. We even seen a teaser, right? The Teams notification that you could use as an, in an attack scenario. Um, we can create our own phishing templates based on code or we can steal it from existing emails. But with that feature, there came also a lot of unuser friendly experiences, getting those indicators correctly, having some bugs as, as well in the same part of the website. Uh, but hey, a product has to grow, and over time, with feedback, it can become a really great product. If you would consider subscribing, it's very much appreciated, but this was my video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.